You know, I once made the joke about this video that I should just turn this whole thing into a Scooby-Doo channel. Here we are. Friends, my name is Brianna Sukiyama Bond, otherwise known as the Ordinary Scholar, and I don't really do these types of videos, these types of commentary style videos. But like the other week, I was just minding my own business, innocently scrolling through YouTube, and this <laughs> came across me, and I was just, I was compelled. I was compelled to watch it and engage with it. Can you, can you guess why? Can you guess why? That's not Shaggy. I don't know who they are trying to fool, but it is not this bitch. Hashtag not my Shaggy. So I wanted to sit down, watch the show, talk to you guys a bit about it, as well as talk about the overall issue I have with a lot of these like reboots that we're getting these days. Let's, let's begin. So I see we're going to be going the monsters are real route. According to theorists, that means this whole thing actually takes place in a video game. Good to know, good to know. Coming, mother! There she is, my sweet, beautiful little girl. Good morning, mother. I love how they have the actress playing Daphne's mother. I don't know if this person is actually that tall or if they are on a box to try and get this height difference to make it seem like Daphne is a child, but you're not fooling me. Also, can we, like, really quick, why is your hair so frizzy? Daphne Blake would never. Couldn't have given me, like, five more minutes, huh? All right, breakfast is served. How about one of our special Scooby snacks, hmm? Hey, is there a Scooby snack in there for me? Norvo, you're gonna make me late again. Okay, now I know these people didn't do their research because Norville Shaggy Rogers is the heir to a multi-million dollar throne. I don't know who this sheriff is. Hashtag not my Shaggy. Finish up, get dressed. Can't really have the sheriff showing up late to the sheriff's office now, can Dad? we? Dad? I'm fine. Head to work. I can take care of myself and head to school. Dude, he's 26. I think he can make his own decisions at this point. I think that went pretty well. What do you think? Oh, yeah? <laughs> Why do I want your opinion anyway? I'm not gonna lie. The way they went about having Scooby speak pretty much through Shaggy, it's pretty cute. I actually really like that. That's, that's a really cute way to do it to make the show more realistic. But I'm not gonna lie. That Scooby-Doo in brackets in the title feels like a bit of a lie, though. Like, it's, it is a cute idea. It is absolutely a cute idea. But it is definitely interesting to take what tends to be the title character and literally take away their entire agency as a character. Wait, wait. What is it? What is it? What is it? Ah! 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 
today? We were trying to get the abs first. Was that, was that the most important part of the shot? Is that what happened? Oh my lord. Look, boys. Turns out Jones can handle more than just balls. <laughs> it's really a shame, though. All of that power, and yet still terrible aim. Didn't Daddy ever teach you how to follow through? Aw, oh, come on, Jones. Can't take a joke? Guess there's another thing Daddy didn't teach you, huh? Too late now. First things first, now is a great time to tell you this show has some of the hammiest villains and interpretations of teenagers I've ever seen in my life. It's rough to watch. This doesn't sound any inkling of the word natural. It honestly feels like a botched slam poetry. That's how the lines, that's that's what the lines are giving. It's, it's definitely rough too. Could not have been me. It could like, if someone decides that they want to harass me, dead parents type of thing. That's the day I go to jail. Coolzilla is gonna have two murderers now. It could not have been me. Jones, Summers, what the hell's going on in here? No, if I if I was Fred, I would have picked up this coach, talked to them outside, and then I would have ended this shit right here and right now. I, I just, I don't have the patience for this. I really do not. And so if you want to test me, understand, I know how to ace a fucking quiz. I have a package for you. It's out by the back door. Jinkies. We miss you, Dad. Is it me or did that feel so out of nowhere? <laughs> so the first time I watched this, I genuinely had no idea what the fuck was going on with this scene. I still don't even 100% know. Her mother does own a bookshop that we will see later on, but it doesn't look like this. So I, at first I thought this was the school library. Maybe this is their home. I genuinely just don't know. I well, I feel that no, but I feel that I understand. That you need to explain it to him. No, I, I want to explain, explain it to him. Me. Sorry, I'm late, everybody. I got held up in court, and you wouldn't believe the traffic. Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Bergman. Now that you've arrived, I take it we can proceed. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's get started. Thank you. So, as I was saying. We are here to discuss where we go from here. Or more aptly put, where you go from here. Thank you, Sheriff Rogers. As I'm sure you're aware, your parents left you everything in their possession, including the house. Wait, 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 wait. I'm so confused. Why? Let's get this straight. So we're, we're on the same page. It looks like we're doing the reading of the will in the principal's office? Absolutely, like, none of this makes it. Why is the principal there? Why is the sheriff there? Why is the sheriff here and talking to Fred like he's about to arrest him? I'm so confused. This is so inappropriate Ab like this should absolutely not be how this is handled why are we why are we just reading the will at school in front of two just random fucking guys what's going what's going on that might sound like an awful lot for a young man your age to handle which is why we've come up with two options who the fuck is we this is the sheriff and the principal and the lawyer. You have two people that are basically not related in any way, shape, or form to Fred. They just he they they happen to be around him on occasion. What do you what do you mean you've sat and discussed with these two random fuckers the future of this child's life? 
after the death of his parents. This is what? According to the state of Ohio, Fred, you were legally allowed to emancipate yourself and continue to take up residence in your parents, in your home. Two things. One, why are you opening with your parents' home as if Fred has not presumably lived his whole life there? I, like, that was, like, that was also, like, a really unnatural thing to do. Two, is that a thing? That, like, in the state of Ohio, you can just no longer have a guardian if your parents are murdered? I feel like that's the worst time to just give a child the ability to not have any adult supervision is immediately after their parents were murdered. <laughs> let's let's actually look that up because that doesn't that doesn't feel like it in any way, shape, or form could be a thing, right? A few moments later. No, like that's absolutely not a thing at all. In this type of situation, he could request to go through the process of becoming emancipated and he would have to prove that he can take care of himself and be a responsible adult and then he could potentially be emancipated, but he doesn't just get handed the opportunity to be emancipated. And if they're trying to say he's 18, and that's why he can choose to be emancipated. They're actually gonna go on to another option in which he just requests a different guardian and that guardian then takes over all of the property and all of the like legal rights to everything until Fred decides he wants it. If he's 18, he can kick it with this second guardian, but that person would not in any way, shape or form receive anything for taking Fred in as basically a roommate. That is absolutely not how that works. Granted, he is like 32, so it's a bit of a non-issue, but... Or your aunt and uncle have agreed to take you in for the time being. If you choose to live with your uncle, the house will, of course, stay in your name, but controlling interest will revert to him until such a time as you desire to take up residence. You know who should have been here? This... Aunt and uncle. There have been some great people to have here. The way they're describing it is also saying Fred is going to basically be on his own until he decides whether or not he wants new guardians, which is also just not, well, none of the things they're saying here make sense. But you know who probably should have been present at the discussion of whether or not we are going to potentially be your new guardians? Said new guardians. Aunt and uncle. Where are they? Like, it just, why, why are there two random fucking people from around town just here when relatives could be, <laughs> you know? Honestly, I'm calling some high key shenanigans on this whole situation here. Fred. There's no right or wrong answer on this, son. Take all the time you need. We just want what's best for you. You know who could have said those lines? An aunt and uncle. You know, just people that are potentially going to be taking care of this child for however long they want to try and pretend this, this guy's in high school. I don't know, maybe I'm just being picky, I don't know. It is your decision. I'm sorry, this is, this is just some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen in my life. You're telling this child to choose wisely on whether you want to live alone in the house your parents were murdered in, or live under the adult supervision of two fuckers who couldn't be bothered to be at the reading of your parents' will, I fucking guess, but you're going to request this child live alone in the house his parents were murdered in until he makes the decision on whether or not he wants new adult supervision. I just, this is some of the least believable shit I've ever seen in my life. Oh dear Lord. Well done ladies. I couldn't have held them better myself. You're all dismissed. 
I'm not gonna lie, at times it feels like these people saw Mean Girls and that was either their only experience with high school or like their dream experience with high school and they just ran with it throughout this whole fucking show. Girl, you're the queen of this school. Seriously, I hate you both. You're beautiful, elegant. You're like the picture of royalty. That's our boy, king of the red devils. <laughs> set, 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 set. <laughs> oh God, oh God, please stop. This makes me, this is so cringy. Please God, stop. <laughs> okay, so if we haven't caught the plot already so far, uh, Fred's parents got murdered. Shaggy's, I guess, like a slacker dude that does weed. Velma's mom is a drunk book lady. And Daphne really wants to be Regina George. Yes, that's about all I got so far. You're Fred Jones, right? Pause, pause, pause. Editor, can we zoom in on that? Right, just right, right there? Print limit five pages? Now I know these people have never high schooled. Five pages? Oh my god, that is shorter than the length of most important school papers. And that's only assuming you have one class, you only have one class that requires you to turn in a paper. Oh my God, that is criminal. That is absolutely criminal. That sign alone is discrimination. The school's trying to flunk out any student that, does, that can't afford a fucking printer at home. Oh my God, that is some high level sabotage right there. Five pages? It's just been a really rough day. I get it. My dad died a few years ago. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. So demonology, huh? Fascinating subject. Controlling and summoning demons from hell. Heavy stuff. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. This is just a research paper that it's I It's okay. Doing. My mom's superstitious, too. Thanks for the pep talk, Dinkley. It was a lot of fun. I'll see you around. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not good at human interaction. At least that's what my mom tells me. And honestly, I agree. It's way too stressful thinking about subtext and intention and all the other aspects of conversation that can go terribly wrong. That's why I prefer the safety and security of my Mr. Science. She only presents evidence in black and white that leads to only one conclusion. Cool. So now we know these people don't science either. I'm sorry about your dad. Okay. I really am. But your experience with grief doesn't make you an expert on mine. Facts. It had red eyes, didn't it? We're going to get back to this specific scene in a little bit. But I do want to have like a brief intermission to discuss these characters. Fred. Fred is boring. <laughs> He's kind of just a broody dude. He's especially not Fred Jones. Fred Jones was arrogant, but because he actually just thought that highly of himself, not necessarily even that he thought less of other people, he just thought he was fucking great, even though he was absolutely clueless as all hell. But even despite that, he was still a nice guy. He's the type of guy who could see literally anyone and walk up to them, hey dude, how's it going, let's go. What's up, buddy? And like strike up a conversation with literally anyone in that type of way. Like you'd be best friends for years. That's how I think of Fred Jones. This guy is there. He's present. He's more of a thing of things are happening to. He is more of a receptacle for the plot as opposed to a character doing things because that's who they are. Velma. Velma, and this is honestly probably the worst scene with Velma of the whole episode that I've seen. There's an extreme amount of like facial expressions, which I just is definitely different. But the thing that bothers me with how they depict Velma is Velma is 
yes, awkward in social situations, but it's not necessarily just talking to anyone. The reason why it sticks out to me in this scene is because she approaches Fred, and yes, it was originally just as a I wish you condolences thing, which can be awkward, understandably, but then she starts like peeking in on his browser history and she wants to like ask questions and figure out more about that and, and then lead to a conversation and try and get to a point where they can converse about the demon thing. That is the point where Velma Dinkley would have been very secure in herself because she is now, she's more getting research. She is discussing a phenomenon at this point. She is discussing the science of grief in this moment. And again, this is something she initiates. This is something she literally all but chases him out of the library for. This is, this is something that she as a character should be more confident in because this is her wheelhouse. This is research, this is study, this is information that she is trying to get out of this person for the sake of learning facts and pieces about the situation. That is what Mystery Inc. does, that is what Velma does with them, and you have her fucking fl fl like flubbering, fl flubbering, that's gonna be a word, flubbering over herself because it's a person she's talking to that's just not the that's not the character it's and it does stick out to me because i am very similar in the same way she is just trying to get more information and ask these questions see what he knows and what ex his experiences can be see how that applies to other information she already has there's now a scientific or scholarly discussion that she is tr like trying to shift the conversation into and it she just is not it's still super uncomfortable talking now that that's where it is and it's just weird it doesn't it just doesn't fit for me it doesn't fit for me i got nervous my palms were sweating like all the signs of some sort of nervous breakdown i panicked i said the first thing that came to my head it doesn't mean anything okay fine make up your mind was there a demon there the night your dad died or not allegedly and that's all you're gonna tell me there's nothing else to tell there is from where i'm standing fred when my father died, my mom became obsessed with visions of this thing. She poured herself into paranormal research, trying to explain what she saw. But there was never any scientific proof or evidence that she saw anything. There still isn't. The only conclusion supported by actual scientific fact is that her grief fueled a hallucination that caused her to see a demon for closure. There are documented cases of this happening all over the world. People will believe anything if it leads to an explanation. But not me. Facts don't lie, Fred. Ghosts and monsters aren't real. And here is probably like the roughest writing of the episode. If you didn't catch that, apparently Velma just kind of vomited out the word demon. And it, because she was stressed and actually in no way finds that to be a valuable topic of discussion, which now begs the question, what was she trying to accomplish with that conversation with Fred? From what it seemed like, we naturally got the like condolences thing, but then she saw his browser history. She started talking about the, about the demon stuff. He tried to leave and she chased him down to try and see if he also saw this rel really pretty specific image when his parents died. But she doesn't actually believe that that's a real thing. She thinks it's just a coincidence. She has no interest in talking about it because it's not real. It's definitely a very awkward attempt to try and get these two together. That's, that's exactly what this is, is they wanted Velma to have experience with this thing. Then she and Fred can go off and do research together. The issue is to have her so fervently against the idea, it just doesn't make sense that she would be so aggressive to bring it up and to see if he also saw this thing, but then be immediately dismissive of it if he wants to talk with her further about it. Yet if she doesn't believe it's at all real, she thinks it's just a hallucination, she doesn't want to talk about it, why was she so 
determined to make sure that he also saw the thing her mother saw. Doesn't make sense, does it? It just, it doesn't make sense. I just can't believe that she went out of her way to be like, hey, you th you're looking up demons. Did this demon happen to look exactly like the demon that my mother saw when my father died? Yes, I'll fake. <laughs> Why do you want to talk about it? Like, it, it would have been a completely different thing if she was also interested and in even just the concept and just talking about the concept and what he felt, what he saw, seeing how that can relate to the science we know about hallucinations. And if she was actually interested in looking at all of that thing. But for her to spontaneously combust the word demon with red eyes that like drew a specific emotional reaction out of you and then be completely dismissive is like if Superman said Martha and then was like, I don't even think that's a real name, bro. Like, what are you talking about? That entire scene just feels so manufactured and so unnatural to be going on here. What you've all been waiting for, our homecoming court. Now, when it's I call funny. your name, we got this lady. Oh. An amazing yearbook staff will be there to take a group photo. Now, ladies, are you ready? The nominees for this year's homecoming queen are Daphne Blake, <laughs> Sophie Hansen, Melody Grace, Camilla Hemingway, Blake Bellows. Thank God. Okay. And finally, Ophelia Cartwright. Oh. Let's hear from the nominees. <laughs> now I will see all of you in the gymnasium for one. Is it me or is it weird that this is an assembly? Like, why are they screaming this out over the announcements? My my husband said this would also have been an assembly at his school too. So like, I don't know. This is just weird to me. Two. Fuck the guys, I guess. Story-wise, I'm pretty sure all of these kids are supposed to be villains. Like, they're all supposed to be, like, the mean, popular kids, right? And Daphne is a villain to, like, most of the school. Ophelia is the villain to her. That's that's how this works. And what's probably gonna happen is something something is going to cause an epiphany in Daphne and she's going to escape the clutches of these terrible, terrible lifestyles. A thing that is super apparent to me, and I, I doubt it was intentional, but the optics aren't great that all of the like minorities and diverse characters in this show are all bad people. They're all villains. There's these guys. There is also a drug dealer later in the show. They're all villains. And again, don't think it's intentional, but doesn't look or feel great. Solution, don't have every single character be all the same stereotypically shitty person. That would be the solution here. But uh, it's great. <laughs> let's go, hustle, hustle, let's go, let's go. Look at that. That a boy, Whoa. guys, that a boy, that a boy. Good stuff, boys. Hey, nice job out there, guys, yeah. nice job. Real talk, can we hit me up with whatever deodorant they're using that's allowing them to go through like, what, a two, two and a half hour practice? Not a. Not a drop of sweat, not a drop of sweat. Also, whatever repellents on the pants, so that way this baseball practice, no dirt on those white pants. I need that. Also, last thing, is this motherfucker just in shorts? <laughs> like my guy, I'm distracted by your knees. Are those even dress code? No. Listen, what happened between you and Seth Summers earlier? I don't wanna know. You don't wanna know? As an authority figure at this school? Like, even if you're not, like, a teacher, which you, your faculty, at, you don't want to know about the well-being and safety of these students as faculty? No? Cool. Just checking. You got a lot on your mind. A lot of anger. That needs an outlet. 
How dare you go up to this child who had someone bullying them because their parents are dead and be like, you have a lot of like unreasonable anger. Like you're just, you're just a volcano for no fucking reason, my guy. You need to figure yourself out, okay? Like that boy's father is the principal of the school, my boss. And if anything is to happen between you and Seth Summers, you are gonna get suspended. Okay, we're upgrading it. Like every, every ethnic character, including the principal, villain of this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get back. Yeah. Wrong answer, you little prick. We know you. That's good enough for us. Someone told this dude, okay, like we need you to be a discount Bryce Larkin. And he said, say less. He said, I want to be Bryce Larkin when I grow up. He said, I'm Bryce Larkin and Nate Jacobs' love child. Okay, now for our second intermission to like refresh you on the plot. Fred and Velma are looking up the potential that monsters are real and actually killed his parents. Shaggy, I didn't show much in the show because it's really not relevant yet, but Shaggy is currently no one go calls him Shaggy. He's, he goes by Norville, but he has a club that he calls Shaggy that he runs and there's going to be a party tonight and unbeknownst to him, the whole of the school is going to be there because popular girl demanded it so. And Daphne is running for homecoming queen. Wow, do you ever take a break? This line is so weird. This line is so weird. Cause like, theoretically, they're in school, right? So, homework. Homework, it's just so weird that he would look at her looking at a textbook and think, oh, this is clearly some unnecessary shit she does not need to be doing instead of homework. This is just more proof that they are actually undercover cops and not real students. Studies show that people who experience or even witness traumatic events show a 75% higher chance of seeing hallucinations or supernatural events. Take for example, Jonathan Jacobo a perfectly healthy 35-year-old male from Springfield, Missouri. If you told me that was a picture of Fred, I would have believed you. These two are twins. They're on the same 401k plan. Side note, I do love the little Jonathan Jacobo Easter egg. There was also in the earlier, like, workout scene that Fred had. He had a shirt that said, Coolsville High Established 1969. Nice. That's actually the year of the first episode of Scooby-Doo, which really appreciate. I would wear that shirt. I would, I would want like sleeves, but I'd wear it. Yours just happens to have a semblance to my mother's. Okay, and explain that. Simple. Are you familiar with Benjamin Ravencroft's film, Hellspawn? Yeah, what about it? Well, in that movie, the evil antagonist is the demon Asmodeus, loosely based on the ancient demon of the same name. Look familiar. I will say that doesn't necessarily like explain what's going on here. Like she's saying, just because you're familiar with this movie, that's 100% why two completely unrelated people saw the exact same figure unprompted recently when they saw a loved one die. Yes, the concept of seeing a hallucination when in an extremely traumatic event is like real, but like if two people like a couple miles away from each other both saw this creature like when a loved one died, police aren't gonna, or police shouldn't be like, you probably were both just around up marshals recently and so you had this creature, this little stress ball creature on the mind, and that's why you saw it. No, they'll be like, hey, that it's very odd that these two unrelated people saw very similar, if not the exact same thing, with no real prompting in these situations. They, there would be a lot more questions. She is just going about this and talking about this in a way that isn't logical. 
and it, the lo the logical explanation she's trying to give just doesn't work. You guys wouldn't know them; they go to a different school. But so I was in college. Cassie, is that you? How'd you get out of Euphoria? Hi. Did Nate follow? You don't play ball. Oh, maybe a little birdie goes and tells Daddy all about your extracurricular activities. Yeah, a little birdie, Norville. You want to risk it? So you think real long and hard about whose side you're on. Okay, Pumpkin. Yeah. Mine. Scooby, get him! Whoa. <laughs> get him, Scooby. Bullshit, no, absolutely not. If Scoobert Scooby-Doo is gonna do one thing on this goddamn planet, it is protect Shaggy. But this is, this is disgraceful. This is disrespectful. Hashtag not my Scoob. What if I'm right? This book could be the key to proving that. Okay, it would change everything. That's what you're afraid of, isn't it? Because if everything changes and science fails you, you don't have anything left. Okay, science didn't fail her, high school science failed her. Because again, like, people in the sciences and medicines and stuff like that, they're the most obtuse motherfuckers on this planet because a good scientist, a good analytical person, scholar, would never give a, like, 100% of anything because they know that there's always a chance that they missed something, that they couldn't see the whole picture, that they don't have the technology or the ability to see the whole picture. Again, a good one would acknowledge their own bias and how that obstructs their view. And just there's always the chance that new information or new technology will come up and change everything we know about everything. And it's weird because I remember Velma speaking a lot more in terms of probability and that would be more accurate. It would, it's completely different to be like, there's like a 99% chance that this isn't true, that this isn't happening. But the scientific person, the analytical person is willing to explore all possibilities to see if they further support their understanding or change it. Because you know, sometimes when you just see a motherfucker flying around, that 1% seems just it seems a little bit bigger. And so, so the scientific community is typically going to speak in terms of those probabilities. And yes, they can be very, very like 99% sure. They can be very confident in something, but they would never give the 100% because then if the, in the event that something world changing happens and gives you a lot more information. There's just so many instances in which that is bound to happen, in which we are bound to unlock some new form of information. And so you leave room for that. But this show is having Velma treat science in such a, explicitly, she explicitly says it's black and white when it's just not, that's just not how science works. Maybe, I will say I might have just a different experience with these types of discussions because I'm also like ignoring all the scholar stuff that I do for this channel, my just general love of research. I used to study law and I used to be very interested in law and so I used to go and do camps and programs with law and a big thing they teach you in law is be careful with expert witnesses because a lot of times they're not going to speak in sureties which can be something that can sway a jury. That is also just another tidbit I have on the situation. <laughs> Could be the key to finding out what happened to my mom and dad. Maybe even your dad. Okay, I'll read it. I hope you find what you're looking for. Num quid cure quente. Oh, somebody has not taken a language course their whole life. Oh my god, the white accent on every syllable. I'm surprised the demons even know what she's saying. Um, not take Eva. Jinkies. What just happened? Do you believe me now? Beginning to come around to the idea? What was that? Okay, 
and that's pretty much the end of like what seems like it's gonna be the only like mystery in the show the rest of it seems like it's gonna be demon hunting and if you were keeping tabs we had one hour-long episodes and zero mysteries were incorporated okay let's break down these characters let's go over these characters oh my god i'm like traumatized with my mic on um i honestly feel like of them scooby was probably the most true to character although we do we do have words about that betrayal from earlier we do have some words to say about that shaggy norville i uh, yeah definitely nothing like shaggy from scooby-doo don't think i saw them eat once aside from the scooby snacks not once which hurts i will say though he is the only character on the show that I'm even kind of interested in actually seeing anything else for. Fred, like I said, soggy piece of bread. He's just kind of, he's just there. He is a conduit for the plot to be driven through. He is there for things to happen to. He just, he doesn't scream personality for me. He's just kind of a sad bro. And I will say the comparison is hard because Fred Jones in every iteration of this show. He's not mourning the death of his parents that happened. What I'm led to believe was like yesterday. He's, I, I'm led to believe he his parents died last night and he immediately showed up, went to school when the sun rose. That's, that's what I'm led to believe here. And you know, that would impact a lot too. It's just hard with this being the introduction to the character for the show to have nothing really to work with beyond that and because the other characters just kind of don't hold up on their own it all just falls flat velma let's on let's cut out let's chop off and throw away that intro scene with velma because like that felt more like they were trapped in a trying to figure out a way to get these two characters together as opposed to actually using that as an example of her character or a perception of her character. I feel like they end up kind of trapping Velma in this box of things are black and white when again that's like not, it's, it's hard to vibe with Velma when that's just not how sciences work. And so she more comes off as closed-minded and a little ignorant as opposed to she just is a science-based person. She is a science-focused person. She just wants to deal with like facts and logic and and math and stuff like that. It's so it's really hard to be into her character right now because again, she really just comes up as close minded She does not have any inquisitive spirit to her. She does not seem to be interested in learning. She just wants to repeat the same information she already has. And so that's not really, it's hard to really get into. Daphne, Daphne I think is the hardest one. Cause for the most part, and I feel like in a lot of video iterations, she doesn't really have much going for her, but a lot of people in her see that popular girl aesthetic that's kind of, so I can see why they would go plastics, but that feels, more like choreography for the character versus her actual personality. She doesn't seem to have, like the most personality she has is her literally not wanting her boyfriend to drug her competition for Homecoming Queen. And frankly, I don't think basic human decency should count as personality. But <laughs> that's like, that's the most personality we're really given from this character. I don't know if she actually just thinks of herself as that queen bee type of person or if it's a pressure because of her family. I don't feel a character there. I just know she is supposed to replicate the plastics. And again, they didn't have much to work with. I just don't think they went far with it. My favorite iteration of Scooby-Doo is What's New Scooby-Doo. And in that show, Daphne is not like a tech genius, but she's like a mechanical genius in that show. And I love to see how they use stuff like, she's really into home design. And from there, she's also into construction and how to build out a like room and build out a design of a home. She can do it from the ground up. And so you see her build from the ground up a whole house and, that's, and stuff like that. And that's super interesting to see where you can go with that idea of someone being into aesthetic. 
This show just kind of doesn't do anything with her. Now for the burning question. Is it a good Scooby-Doo adaptation? No. And that's kind of my issue with a lot of adaptations or reboots that we have today, like Riverdale, like that monstrosity they did with my Wix girl. You have something completely unrelated, and then you throw like a Scooby-Doo skin over it. But if I have a cloak and a salt and pepper beard, dark hold on my back, jump out of plane and start dabbing. Does that make me Doctor Strange? Am I the multiverse of madness? No. I just have that filter on. And so this show has that filter on. It has the characters' names there, but that's not, they're not actually portraying the characters at all. But they're doing it to take advantage of the audience that Scooby-Doo already has to gain their own. It's more frustrating. It's more frustrating when it comes from a big studio. Like, Netflix has zero reason to try and manipulate people that way. Literally, but this is literally on a YouTube channel. I, I get why they would want to use a tag like Scooby-Doo to try and find people to help join and join in and appreciate something that they clearly, clearly put a lot of work into and they clearly are passionate about this. It just, it's not actually a good representation of Scooby-Doo at all. Do I think this is a good show? It's definitely not something I would vibe with at all. It's not my type of show, but I feel like people who would like a show like Riverdale, uh, maybe Vampire Diaries or Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I've actually never seen the other, the last two, so just kind of guessing on that one. But like, if you don't really like Riverdale, I think you would like this show. I think you would find a good, some entertainment in this show. I just think it is unfortunate that they couldn't go with their own original Demon Hunter type story. You're inspired by Scooby-Doo, but that doesn't mean you're actually making Scooby-Doo. It's just unfortunate that it's so it would be so hard for them to be able to have an original product and then get people to come and flock to it to appreciate the work that they've done. So something that I didn't say, I didn't think of it until after the video was done, but there's this thing that the writing community does and that like authors and stuff do, especially like when they're trying to pitch their books that like I absolutely love. I feel like it's kind of the solution to this issue that we have here. It just, it's, they basically say, hey, this book is if this meets this. So like, I would say my series, The Queen of Thieves is like, if Kim Possible meets Chuck meets the bell jar, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. But it, they still have their own very original story that actually is, like gives them room to like, have completely different people in those spots while also aiming for a certain vibe, aiming for a certain aesthetic, feeling inspired by a certain thing. And I feel like it would be very beneficial if TV shows and movies and stuff could kind of follow that lead. So I do think that there is an audience for this show. I just don't think this show deserves to be in the Ruby Ruby Roo Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please, please God show it some love. I have gone through hell and back with this video. I recorded it once. All that audio was blown out, so I re-recorded it. My mic died. My mic died when I was re-recording it, so this is the third time around for some clips, and I'm tired and a little sad and would really appreciate if you could like, subscribe, check out my vlog channel, show some love over there, show some love while I'm not crying. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, if you are very interested in some original content, I do that. I have these books, the Queen of Thieves series, A New Throne is book one, Catwalk Criminals is book two, and then we'll put book three, Island of Fairies, up on the screen. They are available on Amazon.com. Links for that will be down below. And if you just have like $5 burning a hole in your pocket and you're dying to support me, thank you. 
but I have something you can do with that. I have a Patreon. Over there you can support me for as little as $2 a month, but like the real gems come in around $5. You get the early access to my YouTube videos for both this channel and my vlog channel. You also get to be a part of my pre-release premieres for all of my books where I do an episodic release of the chapters as well as some behind the scenes on my Patreon before the book is available to the public. If any of that sounds awesome to you, please check out the links down below. Show some love. We really appreciate it. And until next time, Valedictions, friends. <laughs>